What's up guys, today we're playing Epic 7 and this is all about the Earth Expedition. This boss is not so hard, but there's so much reading. They put so much words in that it's so difficult to really nail down what we have to do to beat this boss. So I'm going to make it simple, I'm going to show you, and we are going to destroy this boss today so that we can get these amazing rewards. Let's get started. Expeditions have come a long way since they first launched. When the expedition first came out, you had to have very strong friends who were active, and that way you could destroy the boss and get the rewards. Now with open recruitment, players from all over the server can band together to, to kill all the bosses and make sure that we are getting the most out of the game as we can. It has made it so very simple to go in and get the rewards. So let's talk about the rewards that we can get. Each one of the bosses will give you a different kind of reward for reforging your uh, gear that you get, you know, through your hunts. The Brutal Ferris, this guy is the uh, fire boss, and he gives you the Wyvern. Blooming Snag Lich, he's the earth boss, and he gives you Gollum. And then we have Gigantes, Destructive Giant here, and he's going to give you Azamanic. You can also buy the Premium Pass for 1500 and I always do. This is going to give you even more materials and it's going to give you even more of your chest so that you can go in and get a lot of gear that's going to be very in game i personally i don't buy epic passes but consider it like this it cost me 1500 to buy the the premium pass here and the expedition it cost 900 to go get what i would consider less rewards in the epic pass than you would get right here and you basically get it every single month this is going to help you progress it's going to help you get gear and it's going to help you to build a lot of amazing amazing items that you can use to advance and have fun in epic 7 because that's what it's all about that's why we're here and this every single month gives you that opportunity to advance and we have to take advantage of it now the boss that we're going to be talking about today is Blooming Snag Lich. This is the Earth boss. He has a lot of skills that he uses during this fight, and we just don't care. We care about one thing, and that's Neurotoxin. If you get this on you, he is going to ruin your life. So we got to do everything we can not to get this. Now it does seem to be pretty difficult, but it's really not. What happens is we have this gold killinoid this ad this little crystal guy here and when you kill him he gives you the neurotoxin antidote which is amazing as long as we continue to kill this guy we're always going to have the antidote which means it's just an auto battle from there so how do we do that well we have to hit the boss and the ad at the same time nearly every round we're going to constantly kill him and the next thing you know this becomes a very very easy fight. Today we're going to illustrate a standard build team. This means that we have a knight in the front row to take those boss attacks. We have a healer to keep everyone alive. You can also have an alternate team with different healing elements, but we're going to go into that at the end. You have to have a debuffer and you have to have a attacker. Let's go in first and we're going to talk about the knight, maybe some alternatives and how you can build this hero. For our knight, for a long time, I used Adventurer Ras, and he's fantastic. He has a buff onto his S3 that does an AoE, so you're constantly hitting that Geode every four turns. He also has a dual attack on his S3, and when you bring along Bob Monocana, there you go. He has a chance to give that defense break, but then also you're going to hit that Geode. Now, one thing that I did find with Adventurer Ras is that... While he's very good, we have to build him a very specific way because he has a buff on his S3. If you go before the boss, the boss is going to go and they're just going to remove that buff anyway. So you want to build him at 180 speed if you're going to use Adventure or Ras. This goes for the same on your debuffer and it goes for the same with any buffers that you bring. Now honestly, I really didn't want to build Cecilia, but she does it so much better 
and I also use her into the Light Expedition. She's a fantastic tank in Light Expedition. I put her on the exclusive equipment to decrease speed on her S. I think it's S2. Yeah, S2, which is good. What this does is it allows her to use her S3 first. The boss goes and that's fine. But then what we really want is the decrease attack and the decrease speed from her S2. Then to top it off, she has a two turn defense break at a 50% on her S1, which is just fantastic. Bringing more than one defense break ensures that you're going to land this debuff and then you're going to do more damage. So very important that we bring a defense break anytime we're doing this. What you want is ideally you can put her at 180 speed. I put her on this gear just because it's left over. She has defense, she has HP, speed 180, you know, you can give her more and that would be fine. And then you want at least 85 effectiveness. This is going to ensure that you're able to land those debuffs so that you can cycle and do more damage on this boss. Next up, let's talk about your healer. Now the best healer is probably Mascot Hazel. And this is because she's going to give you a greater attack buff for any of your fire heroes. So you bring a full fire team and you get 25% more attack just by bringing her. The problem is, who uses her? So I never built her. She's here just because I wanted to do the specialty change. If you have her built, she's going to be the best healer. Alternatively, we have Tamarine. Tamarine is pretty much amazing in everything that she does, right? You can use her into the Earth Expedition. You can use her in a Fire Expedition. You can also use her into the Dark. And uh, she does great. She's fantastic. You can use her in a ton of other PvE type scenarios. And you can use her for Abyss. She is an all around great hero. What we want out of her is we want the S3, right? The S3 removes all of the debuffs on us. It gives us attack buff, and also it's going to give us a chance to, to do a dual attack with the hero with the highest attack, which is going to be our bomb model, Kana. So more damage. She brings everything along. You don't need to have uh, any speed requirement. If you make her slower than 180, it's fine. If you make her fast, that's also fine. Just give her enough defensive stats in order to, to live. Make sure that you get up, you know, a little bit of effectiveness and effect resist if you can. These are the stats that I run her at, and it's pretty simple. I could run her a little bit slower, to be honest, and stack this up. It's just been so long, and I haven't really, I haven't really had the desire to change her up, right? She works as she is. I don't need her gear for anyone else, so I basically just leave her alone. Next up, let's talk about debuffer. Debuffers do an amazing function within all of the expeditions. One is they have the uh, ability to take off their buffs. So, you know, when you go into like a fire boss or into a light boss or into this boss, then they have buffs that they put on themselves, which can make them hit harder or make them, you know, more bulky so you don't do as much damage. And Carmen Rose she does that she also has cannot be buffed so that means that they never will cycle unless they have a cleansing mechanism i, th I think the light boss is a cleansing mechanism but this is also amazing then we saw that we have a speed decrease this means that you're going to take more turns which means more damage and it's just great overall carmen rose will do a fantastic job I put her onto Bloody Rose because I like to use her in my Light Expedition. If you only wanted to pick one hero, she'll do an awesome job for you. Stack her up, 180 speed would be just fine. Put some offensive stats on her, and then try and get to about 85 effectiveness. If you're using Bloody Rose, it doesn't have to be as high because you get that extra chance, that extra effectiveness. But this is an amazing artifact for a Light Expedition because it does Vampiric Touch. Now this can be part of your no healer offense for green by using that uh, bloodstone, but also using this artifact and you're gonna do fantastic. You can also use Bale Sazan. Bale Sazan is great. He does a decrease on, on his um, speed 
and I believe he also has a decreased defense here, but I have to uh, level, I have to awaken him and I'm not gonna do it, right? He's super creepy. He's a weird looking dude holding a doll that he's in love with. So I'm, I'm gonna pass, pass, serious pass, hard pass. Instead, we're gonna go to Tenebria. This is my favorite hero to use in this expedition because she has two AoEs. We have a decreased defense, and we have a decreased speed, which is great. I put her on the exclusive equipment for decreasing her S3 by one turn so she can cycle it just a little bit faster. Make sure she's a 180 speed or below. That way, she, when she puts on her debuffs, the boss doesn't wipe them off. You can put her on a damaging artifact. I have her on Etika Scepter because when I was using her with Rass, I found that she needed to have more cooldown resets but you can definitely put her onto a damage artifact and she'll do even more damage. 85 effectiveness, at least 85 crit chance, and you are good to go. If you wanted to do more damage, of course, plus 15. But as you can see here, no Molagora and also no Imprints, and she does great. All of her gear is basically free gear. We have this effectiveness ring, which is awful. I will never reforge this. She does have a decent pair of boots, which helps her do some damage. And then lastly, we have our damage dealer. There are quite a few uh, heroes that you can use as damage dealer. What you want is you want to make sure that on their S1, that they are able to hit more than one target. And Bombline Alcana hits two targets. So we're constantly killing that ad, right? We bring in Tenebria. She's doing AoEs. Tamarin is bringing along Bomb Model, who's doing uh, hitting two targets. We have Cecilia, she's doing AoEs. We're constantly hitting, constantly killing this ad. And so we are doing a great job of keeping that, that immunity on us so we don't get neurotoxin. That's really it. Just get heroes that are going to achieve your objective, hit auto, and call it a day. Now, one thing with Bomb Model Canna is she must be 180 speed or less because she has buffs on her S3. Make sure she does not go before the boss. Next, you don't need to have effectiveness because you get effectiveness onto her passive right here that you only need 35%, but also you're not relying on her to debuff the boss. You're not relying on her for a strip or anything like that. So you don't need effectiveness. This is just how the gear rolled and I have no reason to change it. Go for the offensive stats and very likely if you put her on a speed set you're going to want attack boots I don't use attack boots on a ton of heroes but I do have it here and you know what she does a great job I have her on to the exclusive equipment for an extra 5% dual attacking chance you really don't need it but I'm really lukewarm about all of these so it is what it is totally fine now let's talk about dual attack chance they used to have a 5% dual attack here with a 20% cap. So she was already capping out at that 20%. What they did is they reduced it to three and up the cap to 30. So she gets her 3%, then she gets a 20% here that puts her at 23. And then so she needs seven more percent to cap out. Now what I like to do is I like to keep her on Rosa. This will max out her dual attack chance and give her that 30% bonus whenever she does a dual attack uh, or whenever you know another hero brings her along with that extra attack with the helping it's amazing right this is where you're bringing in tamarin she's bringing along bomb model and that extra extra damage is fantastic on this type of build with the heroes we talked about this team on full auto no touch no do anything will do between 900 and 1.3 million that will take out 75% of the boss's damage or on the boss's HP on level three. If you put her onto a rage set with these stats, you will solo the boss. Like I'm not even joking. You will kill the boss from start to finish by yourself. But I don't have rage set for everyone. And I really, you know, who would I put this stuff on if I wasn't using it on her, right? So it is what it is. But just keep that in mind, if you wanted to build a rage set for all of your heroes and expedition, you're going to do a ton of damage. 
but this works just fine, so I'm not going to fix it. Now, if you wanted to do alternate damage here, you could try something like a Vildred or an Arbiter Vildred or a Spectre Tenebria, someone who's going to be able to hit multiple targets so that they can go into the boss. Alternatively, you could use Tenebria and Carmen Rose together and then put her onto a different artifact so that she heals and then you won't need a healer. So that will be pretty amazing as well. But we're going for a standard build today and we're going to see exactly how that works. destroyed. Torment you. Grant me the strength to destroy evil. I guess it's Nana's turn. Here comes the grand finale. Here, convert. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's shine. Go away. 
You'll be destroyed. I'm gonna be in so much trouble after this. Oh, well. Cute. I want to torment you. Listen. Lance of Steel. Dark Corvus says we don't need anyone else. We won't even need who this guy is over here. We can't see his face. It doesn't matter. We're doing a ton of damage. The rest of the guys picked it up in the open recruitment. And you will win every single time. Open recruitment, these guys are piranha. They will smell blood and they will destroy any of these expeditions. What you have to do is do enough damage to help them out but also qualify for your stage three expedition and you're going to get a ton of rewards when we click on it i mean look at this we are getting these modification gems that are going to help out a lot and we also got some of our reforged materials which is going to help us to reforge our gear and go from 85 to 90 and get those extra stats i hope that this video helped you see just how easy it is to do this boss once you understand what you have to focus on because there's so many words smilegate wants us to read forever and ever but we don't all we have to do is for uh forget all those things and figure out what makes this boss tick thank you guys so much for watching hope this video helped you until next time happy hunting and good luck on your battles